the president acted in the interest of the railroad companies. They've been doing that since 1926 when they enforced that law only for railway workers and airline pilots to take away the right of our brothers and sisters to strike is a violation of their human rights. To take away their right to be sick so that they can speed up and exploit us more is a violation of our human rights. So we came tonight to make a statement. We saw our airline pilots were here in solidarity to make a statement. And so the program tonight is one of solidarity with our brothers and sisters who fight every day to transport and deliver you and goods and services across this country who have been dealt a terrible injustice. Sick days is a human right. Sick days is a human right. Sick days is a human right. So we want to start out to you to understand this all began with just a phone call. It was a phone call among brothers and sisters who understand the role that working people play in this country. And so I want to start out by opening with our brother from Teamsters Local 808 to greet you. And then we're going to have some solidarity statements. And then here we are on Park Avenue and 42nd Street. And we have the ability to maybe do what we want to do. Right? Sick days is a human right. Sick days is a human right. So our brother Chris Silvera from Teamsters Local 808. Our brother Charles Jenkins from the Coalition of Black Trade Unionists. And my brother, as my brother said, I'm Omawali Clay from the December 12th movement. And of course, we have our comrade Larry Holmes from Workers' World and Workers' Assemblies Against Racism. Sick days is a human right. I can't hear you. Sick days is a human right. Sick days is a human right. Brothers and sisters, again, my name is Charles Jenkins, I'm the president. I'm the president of the Coalition of Black Trade Unions New York chapter. And this is what solidarity looks like, right here. Mm. This here weekend, we called an emergency meeting and you turned out in two days. I want to go down memory lane for a minute why this is so important. In 1980, when the pilots went on strike, Paco, that was the worst, the air traffic controllers, brothers and sisters. That was one of the worst attacks against workers that President Ronald Reagan came in this air country against workers. And since then, we've been fighting and fighting. So we're so glad on this evening to have solidarity with my brothers and sisters from the airline. Because it doesn't matter what trade you come from. We're all united because we're all workers. Now watch this. In 2020, 2020, they began to call us essential workers. And we are. But we are essential whether we're on the job or whether we're homesick. And so if we're essential, we demand sick time. We demand sick pay. And so that's what this here solidarity is about. It's about being sexual. It's about being important to move the guillage around this here country, to move transportation around this country. And we do it because we are a workforce that's professional and we demand to be treated, to be treated respectfully when we get sick doing our jobs. And so, on this here evening, we call all the way to the White House. That is betrayal.
your word picks to say you're for us, but you don't give us what we need. What do we need? What do we need? What do we need? And if we don't get it, and if we don't get it, and if we don't get it, so this is what solidarity looks like. It's saying to the railroad workers, we got your back. It's saying to the railroad workers, we understand when you give your labor and you get sick that you should still have a paycheck that equals if you was on the job. That's what this is about. That's what this solidarity is about, brothers and sisters. And so what I would like to do is bring before us the airline. Somebody that's coming over here on behalf of our airline workers. Brian is going to come and give us some words of solidarity. This is a huge statement from the airline division, Brother Brian. Everyone, we did not know we were going to be speaking tonight, so we'll keep this short. I am Brian, and I am with my fellow brothers and sisters from Swapa Southwest Airlines Pilots Association. We're here to stand with you in a show of support so that you understand that as another work group, another labor group under the Railway Labor Act, we, have, we see what's happening, we support you, we want you to. Get what you need to get and get where you need to be and know that you are not alone. We are watching and we support you. Thank you. Thank you, Brother Brian. Thank you, Ally Pilots. Thank you for the solidarity. Good evening. Thank you all for coming out. I truly appreciate the support from the pilots, each and every one of you, Metro North, our conductors. Uh, I see CSEA up here. Local 100 is here. Uh, uh, local 456 is here. Uh, who else is out here? Uh, War, uh, Workers' Assembly Against Racism is here. Uh, DSA seems to be here. Uh, we got Brotherhood of Locomotive Engineers is here. CSCA, I, I think I said them already. But let me tell you this. I've seen a lot of things. This is the most criminal thing I've seen in a long time. That in a post-pandemic environment, that someone thought that it made sense that our government, our government that has billions of dollars for Ukraine and everybody else saw fit to send workers back to work without one paid sick day. That's a travesty. Now I'm going to tell you something because I'm going to say some little things that might be considered somewhat controversial, but I think sometimes it's essential that workers take a strong position it is my position that their union has failed them. And it is my position that sometimes the workers have to take things into their own hands and make a strong stand. And I'm going to tell you something else. See my brothers from the airlines? If we had a general strike, you know they're not flying. You know America ain't flying. United ain't flying. Because all of them is catching hell. They don't have a worker in America today that's not catching hell. And that we have a government, and let me tell you something, it's a flip flap. That's the reason why they separated the two bills. The one bill sends them back to work. The other bill contains the sick days. Because they knew the sick days were gonna fail. It's a flip flap. And when you recognize you've been a part of a flip plan, then you got to do something. And these workers need to take things into their own hands. Let me tell you something, we flip Metro North upside down to get sick days. Now these young cats don't know the history, but that's what we had to do. And we went against the order. We went against the union order. We went against the company order, the governor's order, and we ended up with sick days. If these workers strike one day, it's two billion. If they gave them seven, six days, it's 350 million. Now tell me what economically makes sense to the system. We have to do something different. We have to demand something different. And that's why workers are deserting these parties. They keep looking to the left, they're looking to the right. They can't figure it out. 
but they but they know one thing they're getting screwed and they get screwed by both of them and this was the most visible screwing that the workers have got because now we got you know facebook and instagram and we can see things that we couldn't see 50 years ago so my word to you brothers and sisters i'm sorry to take so much time is that we have to call on our brothers and we got their back they stop we stop 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 Maybe they'll change that one day. Uh, which is the division of the Teamsters Union and also a member of Railway, Railroad Workers United, which is having rallies like this all over the United States 
and has been in the forefront of fighting against this rotten contract that was imposed to Braun Dust. I worked, I'm retired now about five, six years. Uh, I ran high speed trains up and down the Northwest Corridor, but I also worked in freight. And I can tell you, when I was working, the conditions were pretty bad. Uh, I was on the extra board for 10 years, on call, all the things. Today, they're much, much worse. Much, much worse. If you look at in the post-pandemic uh, period, they have eroded over many, many decades the rights that workers had uh, fought for, uh, sizable crews, enough to be safe, and so on. They've chipped away at that, and now they're going after uh, uh, you know, these rights and so on. You know, the Railway Labor Act, the Railway Labor Act doesn't actually ban the right to strike. It makes it, though, more or less impossible. This is something that developed over the course of two or three years. We've been in the bureaucracy, the bureaucratic labyrinth of the federal government and now, at the end of this process, when the companies would not give, they uh, on sick days, the, gov the Democratic and Republican parties combined to impose this contract on us. You know, the great Malcolm X used to say that the difference between the Democrats and the Republicans is that the Republicans would stick the knife in your back six inches and the Democrats would pull it out too. With this settlement, the Democrats and the Republicans stuck the knife in nine inches and didn't pull it out at all. They determined that it would be cheaper for them to, to pay a lot of overtime, as long as the people don't die of exhaustion, to give them relatively better than what most of the working class is getting in wages, um, uh, uh, in this wage uh, settlement, a part of the contract that Biden says is so wonderful, it's still behind the rate of inflation. But to them, it's cheaper to do that than to hire more workers. That is the fact. Now, I'm here to show solidarity. Thank you so much. I've probably gone over my time limit. Yet, and this is very inspiring to see everybody out here together, united, Across craft lines. That's what the Railroad Workers United stands for. Let's break down these horrible reactionary craft divisions. Let's unite in one big industrial union on the railroad and in every industry. And in doing that, we'll unite the whole working class. Thank you very much. Six days are human rights. Part of CSX 
and it's still a junction point. It's a yard. Amtrak stops there twice a day because workers couldn't get jobs in the railroad. They got them in a sweatshop called Imperial Food Products, and 25 of them were burned to death on September 3rd, 1991. The owner was such a racist, he locked the doors because he felt the black workers would steal chickens. But both black and white workers were murdered. 49 children were orphaned by racism and by job cuts. That's what we have to fight. You know, President Biden can force workers to take an, a rotten agreement, but he can't pick up a pen to free 78-year-old Leonard Peltier, a political prisoner and a former leader in the American Indian movement who spent 46 years in jail. That's an atrocity. It's great that we're out here. That's great that we have solidarity and we have to build it further. We don't have to tolerate a railroad baron like Warren Buffett, who sits on a $109 billion fortune, whose hedge fund, Berkshire Hathaway, owns the Burlington Northern Santa Fe Railroad lock, stock, and barrel. Right on to all the workers here in solidarity. Thank you. Thank you for that powerful message, brother. We still, we're gonna keep it. We have some Amazon workers out here. We have some Amazon workers out here. We have some Amazon workers out here. This is cross all. All workers unite. So Amazon workers, as we well know, have been struggling to bring home a first contract since they won the right April 1st to unionize right here in this unionized city. But the bosses, the bosses has continually uh, uh, stayed away from the negotiating tables and the administration that should have been passing a workers' rights Workers' rights laws so that the bosses cannot cripple those that say they want a union. And that's exactly what continues to happen. So I have Justine from the Amazon Union to give us some words of solidarity. Justine, Sister Justine. Thank you, brother. Solidarity forever. 
So we have John from the Building Trades. John from the Building Trades is going to come and give us a message of solidarity. John. Thank you, brother. Thank you, Justine and Tristan from the ALU. We were out there with you guys when you had your rally out there. Thank you, and, and keep, keep fighting, keep fighting. So I'm here from the Building Trades of New York. So I'm here from the Building Trades of New York. And why are we here? We're, because, we're here because of union busting, right? What's union busting? Union busting is disgusting. Union busting is disgusting. Union busting is disgusting, right? So we got the rail companies making an industry that has some of the biggest profits in the United States, $27 billion last year. And we have the rail workers who are exhausted, who have been understaffed for the last five, six, seven years. They've been continually diminishing their workforce. And what they want is just to, to have some time off. But because of greed and profits, the rail companies will not hire more staff. That's basically what's at issue here. And, and that's what we have to get the message out. And we're hoping, we're hoping that maybe transportation director Pete Buttigieg can look at these exhausted workers and bring up safety measures to force these rail companies to somehow staff more people because that's what is at issue here, right? That's what's at issue. So what's disgusting? What's disgusting? Thank you, brothers and sisters. Thank you, Brother John. Thank you from the Building Trade. Thank you, Brother John. Now we bring the education component in from CUNY. We have Brother Sandor, longtime activist in these here streets. Come on up, brother. Thank you. My name is Chandra John, and I'm a member of the faculty staff union at the City University of New York. I'm speaking here in a personal capacity. And I'm also a supporter of class struggle education workers and the internationalist group, the CUNY Internationalist Clubs. Now, I taught labor history for a lot of years, and a situation like this makes me think about something that one of the great revolutionary figures of unionism and of the revolution movement in this country and of labor history, Joe Hill wrote a long time ago. And he said, when the workers take a notion, they can stop all speeding trains. Every ship upon the ocean, they can bind in iron chains because that's the power of labor, which is to shut it down. Now, when the president of the capitalist government of the United States, their government, their capitalist government, Joe Biden, right, said that invoking this anti-labor strike-breaking strike law that in notorious 1926 Railway Labor Act was necessary because a train worker's strike could paralyze the economy. Well, you're damn right it could. And what he is admitting is he's admitting that the railways and the economy runs on the abuse of workers like them. Without sick days, with dangerous conditions, dying on the job, goddammit, right? But we can bust their union busting laws, like the National Railway Act, like the Taft Hartley Act, like the Taylor Law, which makes it supposedly illegal for our brothers and sisters, the transit workers, to go on strike. And it makes it supposedly illegal for us at the City University to go on strike. But we need to get together and bust that union busting law by shutting it down. Now shutting it down means the type of power that we see in potential here of the rail workers and the MTA workers and the Teamsters, am I right? Teamsters got a contract coming up soon. So do we at CUNY, okay? And the dock workers to unite together to shut it down. 
Now let us say, Russell Moore, a real quick thing, I thought what Brother Chris Silvera said about the flim flam is really important. This Democratic Party scam, flim flam, all right? Now this is not the first time that the Democratic Party has busted a strike or tried to. Jimmy Carter invoked the Taft-Hartley law against the coal miners, right? My father-in-law was a coal miner and they used to say you can't dig coal with bayonets. And you can't run the trains with bayonets either. So let me ask you a question. Is Joe Biden a strike breaker? Yes! Is the Congress of the United States strike breakers? Yes! Is the Democratic Party strike breakers? Yes! Well, what about the so-called squad? Are we going to remain silent about that? No! Are we going to remain silent about the DSA squad that voted for this? No! Hell no! We need to break from the Democrats and the Republicans and build a fighting workers party. And then we will take over the whole damn country and the world. Workers to power! Solidarity, solidarity! Solidarity, we still have some more speakers. We still have some more speakers. Did you forget why we're out here? Did you forget why we're out here? Sick time is what? Sick time is what? Sick time is what? It's a human right. We deliver our labor. And in return, when we get sick, because we're not robots, we're humans. And we demand, we demand sick time. We demand it. Now I have Brother Matt coming. Brother Matt is from Local 9. And Brother Matt, come on up, Brother Matt, and share some solidarity words with our sisters and brothers that are out here. Brother Matt. Thank you, thank you very much. My name is Matt Mitchell, I'm the general chairman of the Association of Commuter Rail Employees, Local Division 9. I represent the locomotive engineers right here at Metro North. And I want to echo the sentiments of the speakers before me, Chris Silvera and the representatives of the airlines. They have to understand what everybody here is, 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 is coming out for, right? Human rights, sick time, benefits. How are you supposed to support your family with all that? Okay, we need this. We support everybody uh, from the Amazon workers to Starbucks and, and, and everybody in between. We understand that unionism, solidarity is the only way that we're going to be able to make it as, as Americans in this country. That's it. That's it. And if we don't have that, you're on the outside looking in. And so we need to stand together. We need to support each other. I won't take up any more of your time, but we are here for our, our freight brothers out west in the, in the northeast and everywhere else in between to let them know that we're with you. We want to support you and we want to stand behind you and, and, and make every effort available to you to say that we expect this to take place sooner rather than later. Thank you. Yeah! We got Brother Ed Valente! Brother Ed Valente for Local One. Come on up, brother. Thank you, thank you. Thank you all for uh, for being here in solidarity together. Um, this this wasn't just about money, right? This this wasn't just about work rules. This was about precision railroading. Precision scheduling. This was about a stricter attendance policy implemented during the heart of a pandemic, the worst pandemic since 1918. This was about holding our elected leaders accountable. We need to hold our elected leaders accountable. We need to be here and say we need more of the Democratic Party. We need our ability to fight back. We need the right to strike. We need the right to strike We're put back by the Democrats and the Republicans. And, and rallies like this is a good start. And Acre is here. I am here in solidarity with those freight unions and all other unions who don't have basic human rights like sick time.
Thank you. Since the Carol is not going to bring us any greetings, do we have a representative from our CSEA out here? CSEA! We know we saw CSEA out there. We want to make sure that our coalition here is broad, that it's deep, and that we're sending a message of peer union solidarity. That's what this looks like. That's right. This is it. And let me just say Look at the power. a couple of words on solidarity. Look at the power. Since the pandemic hit us in this country, workers did not back down. Work is, like most of us, that we knew all along, that we were essential to this economy, that we mattered to this economy, and guess what? Nothing, nothing moves or get done without us. We knew that before the pandemic. We understood the power in workers is that if we don't come to work, nothing moves in this city. That's what we have to make sure, brothers and sisters, that we understand. Because the bosses really do understand it. They really do. Joe Biden understood it. And so what's important is us being out here. We could not be silent because if we were silent, that means you agree with the federal government. And so we're out here tonight just making a simple statement. And that is a show of solidarity to those railroad workers. Now I'm a transit worker. In 2005, we took the ultimate plunge, and we struck against the Taylor Law, and we were fine, but we understood our work. And sometimes, when there's a law, we understand, and we got the power of the people that we will win. So I don't care about no legislation. When you understand that we are essential, put legislation together that works on behalf of workers. Now understand, we are essential. Amazon, Starbucks, it's a disgrace for legislation not to be enacted against the forces that don't come to the table when you have a workforce that say, we want to be unionized. And so on this evening, brothers and sisters, this is not just about railroad workers, this is about every worker across every industry. Yeah, that's what solidarity looks like. And if they break one of us, if they break one of us, when we come to the table in any one of our contracts, we will not get our demand. And so tonight was critically important for workers. This is a huge win for workers showing workers believe in solidarity. Oh, yes, we do. And so as we begin to wrap up, uh, we we want to just we want to show our power uh, because we believe when we take to the street when we take to the street uh, I, I understand that marching is the way we accomplish so much uh, and we intend to leave in a march we want to show our power and so we are going to walk through this terminal because we understand that everybody that's commuting 
is a worker. Because the bosses and the CEOs, they're in their limousines. They're not on the trains. So we want to just show our power. We want to show our power. And so I want to just make sure uh, that we're well represented. If we missed anybody from any union that did not get a chance to come and show their support and award of solidarity, then you just please just run up here real quick. Just run here. Just run right up here. Lo lo local three, local. Very important to have you in the house, brother. Local three. Local three is gonna bring some words of solidarity. Good evening, brothers and sisters. Uh, we're in an uncharted time. We have um, a pandemic that we've been dealing with for some time, COVID-19. We know that the president, President Biden, was tested positive this year for COVID-19. He was for five days, he was quarantined. Three days later, after they cleared him, they called it a rebound. And he was had to get quarantined again according to CDC guidelines. The President of the United States has unlimited sick time, okay? So, when you think about it, he also took a ride on Amtrak with CNN. And one of the things that he talked about with CNN was, and they, the conductors calculated that he took over 8,200 trips from Delaware to Washington on Amtrak, which is a train, right? They said that it was a total of 217 miles round trip. So you would think that once he became president and we have these lovely uh, railroad workers, they would say, hip, hip, hooray. Joe's gonna come and save the day. Because if there's anybody that should understand the value of the railroad workers was somebody who ditched his car for railroad um, transportation, okay? But he didn't do that. But what he did say in the interview on January 20th, 2017, with CNN intact, what he did say is that he looks at the windows and he said, and he made, the, he made sure that he said, I'm very serious about this, I'm sincere about this. I look in the windows, I look in the light, and I wonder what is being said in those households that I pass each and every day. Well, you don't have to wonder anymore. They're talking about sick time. They're talking the same people that carted you back and forth from 1972 until you, until, until you left the Senate, all right? These people that befriended you and made sure that you had a safe transportation back and forth, you no longer have to worry about and wonder what they're thinking about, because they came and told you they want sick days. They want seven sick days. They don't want to be treated special. They just want to be treated like everybody else. They want to be treated humane. To have a sick day is humane. What is inhumane is to force people to make a decision on paying their bills and maybe contaminating other people, or even worse, getting more sick. As happened with it, as was the case with him when he had the rebound. So when we say that Joe Biden is not, we, we tell him to evolve and resolve, to evolve and resolve, to evolve and resolve, evolve. We, we evolve as a people due to the pandemic, due to circumstances, and we ask him to resolve it. Because nobody knows and can appreciate the railroad more than him. Thank you. Thank you for those words of solidarity, brother. We have another sister that's joining us uh, from CUNY, Carolyn. Carolyn, come on up. I have to say this is one of the most beautiful sights that I've ever witnessed in, in 40 years of my being on the streets and fighting for people's rights. This is terrific. I, I want to mention that Karl Marx, who was one of the greatest leaders of the working class, said, we have nothing to lose but our chains. Workers of the world unite. Well, the chains that are around us 
are those that the bureaucracy has put on us, that's put around our legs, that's put around our brains, and this is the railroad workers problem right now, because their union leadership has put chains around them, so that they were, like, had they struck, had they struck already, this would have not been an issue. But the fact is, is that your, their union leadership is just like mine. We have so much in common. The union leadership at CUNY does nothing to fight the Taylor Law. In fact, they support the Taylor Law. Because then, if we were about to go out and strike, they would have to deal with us. The other thing is, if you're a part-time worker at CUNY, you also don't have safety. So over the summer, I broke my leg. I'm a part-time worker. I had no sick leave. I had no disability. We're in all in the same boat together. We all need to unite as the working class because we have power. Our power has been demonstrated time and again, and this is definitely true, of the railway workers who can shut the country down from one end of the country to the other. They can shut it down, they can shut down the supply chain, and that's why the bourgeoisie is in opposition to them going out on strike. That's why our bosses, who are the Democratic Party in New York, those are our bosses, are opposed to us going out on strike. And so we have many, many things in common. We have the ability to shut things down. We have the ability to, to to change the whole society around. We need to fight for a labor party. I'm from an organization called the United Front Committee for a Labor Party. We have to stop trusting in the Democratic Party. How many times do we have to be screwed by these people? And our leaders say, oh wait, don't negotiate yet. We have to get the Democrats in before we negotiate. And yet, we don't have a contract. Our contract is up in February. Most of the city unions are up, and we will not be able to strike because we have the chains that are binding us because of the union bureaucrats. We are made to feel weak. We are made to feel separate, but look around. We are from all different unions. We are all together, and we have the ability to shut the country down. So let's follow what Norm says and workers of the world unite. We have nothing to do this but our change. Thank you, thank you, sister. So let me just uh, let you know how we go, what we're going to be doing. We have two more speakers, but we really need to hold this here crowd. Uh, we are going to, we're going to march through Grand Central. It's going to be a powerful sight. Uh, but we want to make sure that we have an orderly march. And what I mean by that, we want to be in uh, three wide. So, and we're going to be behind this banner. Brothers and sisters, what we want is to have an everlasting statement. And when we march, it's a power and it's a statement. And so we, we don't want to miss that opportunity. We're going to go into Grand Central, walk down, make a left, and come right back out on Vanderbilt. But the power, because people are going to be looking and we have leaflets to tell them why we out here. And so that's how we want to be able to end it. Uh, we will be behind this here banner. We're going to go uh, through these here doors. So we would ask for us to be uh, three wide as we do it so that we can look strong, so that we can look organized, and so we can look like the professionals that we are. The professionals that we are. Now, we have this here sister from UFT, teaches her in the house. Teach us in the house, y'all. Uh, what's your name, sister? Emma. So we have Emma from UFT. She's in the house with us. Emma. Hello, I'm Emma. I am a member of the UFT. I'm a high school English special education teacher. Um, I'm a member of Left Voice, and I am so excited to see so many people here. Um, so as a public sector worker in New York City, uh, I'm not going to be the first one nor the last one to say, fuck the Taylor Law. Fuck it, like, our contract uh, ended in September, 
PSCs is ending soon. All of these public sector contracts are ending and they're trying to intimidate us from striking, but we're gonna say, we are not afraid. We are not afraid. Um, so secondly, I just wanted to say that many speakers here have made it super clear. We cannot trust the Democratic Party. We cannot trust the Democratic Party. Just three, four weeks ago, they told us that we should vote for them so that they could protect us. And look what they did. As soon as, as soon as people around this country voted for the Democrats, they sold working people out time and time and time again. They've done it in the past. They're going to keep doing it. So, again, I'm not the only one here who said that we need our own party that's going to fight for us as working people. We need our own party that's going to fight for not, not just our workplace issues, not, yes, for sick leave. Yes, absolutely. We need, we need better pay. We need more sick leave. We need, we need lives outside of our workplace. I know as a teacher it's super hard to have a life outside of the workplace. But we need our movement to fight for more than that too. To fight to fight saying that black lives matter. To fight saying that trans lives matter. We've seen around the world and around the country, oh my gosh, around the country, the striking education workers in California right now, solidarity with them. The striking workers, the, the striking workers in Iran, solidarity with them. All right, thank you so much, I think my time's over. Thank you, sister. One more speaker. We got the nurses. We got the nurses. Hi, my name is Judy Gonzalez. I'm a proud member of the New York State Nurse Association. Yeah. Well, you know, we definitely believe that sick, paid sick days is a human right. We get paid sick days, but when we use them, they discipline us. So that's, that's, that's what happens to people that have sick days. And we get sick, nurses get sick, and during the pandemic, we got real sick. And the hospitals did not protect us. Our, our employers do not protect us. We have these so-called not-for-profit organizations that behave just like for-profit organizations. And right now, 17,000 nurses in the city of New York are trying to negotiate contracts that are going to expire at the end of December. And what's happening? The employers want to cut our, sick, our health benefits. We believe that health care is a human right and everybody should have the right to health care. We believe that our patients deserve the best care possible. I work in the Bronx, which is number 62 in the state in terms of their health statistics. And our patients do not get the care they receive. They don't get the care that patients in Westchester receive and patients who go to wealthier hospitals receive. So you have to look out. We may all be on strike in January for the same thing, for health care, for human rights, and for all the things that matter to all working people. Thank you so much. Can y'all hear me? Yeah. Six days are a human right. Fight, fight, fight. Six days are a human right. Fight, fight, fight. We're getting ready to move, but let me say this to the court. Brother Omawali from the December 12th movement. The greatest weapon we have is unity, but also discipline. Discipline, discipline, discipline. That is the hallmark of workers, is discipline. So when we get ready to move, it ain't chaos, it ain't anarchy, it is discipline. Our power comes from our discipline and unity. And to every degree that we have not organized workers in this country, it is often because of our lack of unity and discipline to show leadership in that regard. So, we're getting ready to move. The banner is gonna be placed in the front over there. We're gonna go three abreast back down the sidewalk.
Stress. 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 Stress.